out of there. Okay, so we were um, discussing uh, the uh, the workroom charter. So next week we can hopefully talk about, uh, discuss, and maybe even vote on the uh, requirements, which I think may be the last one. Because we were having a discussion last week, and uh, I don't know if Morali's on um, uh, or Jim, but um, there was discussion last week about the guys in the various Fabric SDK um, projects uh, figuring out whether there's still a need for a working group or if it's really um, just a, sort of an umbrella project um, of Fabric. And I don't know, uh, is either Morali or Jim on? And have you guys had that discussion? It sounds like not. So what we should do with this, Todd, is I'll, uh, I'll send it out to the mailing list to remind people. Sounds good. About that, and um, and uh, and we can deal with that next week as well. Um, okay. Uh, and and uh, Todd tells me that we do have uh, been on now, so we are at quorum. Is that right? We still. Correct. Yep. Okay. And hopefully, everybody that was previously on is back. Um, uh, and uh, oh, and I lost the agenda, so. Um, Todd, could you display that again? Since I... Thank you. Sure. Um, we had uh, discussed last week about uh, archiving um, all of the uh, Slack history from the public channels um, into a uh, an archive repository. And so I think we just need to take a quick vote on that. Um, we'll do that in a moment. And then um, Todd's got uh, a discussion for the internship program and I think we should you know, maybe think about potentially setting up some sort of a small temporary working group to uh, review proposals and uh, and have the TSC, you know, give, give recommendations to the TSC. Um, next week um, we've got, it, next week will hopefully be a very busy week because um, uh, Tomash was going to give a presentation on the GSL today, but he wants to, uh, he, he needs a little bit more review and he, he wants to make sure that it's the best that it can be, so he's asked for another week. And then uh, we have a request that Gary Singh sent to the mailing list yesterday um, requesting uh, exit from incubation status for Hyperledger Fabric, um, and that uh, Google Doc is, um, was, uh, again, it was sent to the list. It's linked in there from the agenda. Um, there are some missing people from the TSC, and I feel awkward about asking for a discussion and a vote, given that um, some uh, some key participants are missing. And so I think we'll, uh, we'll defer that for next week. But I would encourage people to review the proposal, and if there's comments, questions, or concerns, let's do that on email and uh, hopefully, um, you know, then we can either come to the meeting next week with specific things to discuss um, or if necessary we can work in the interim to try and approve the, the, the request. Um, anything else that anybody needs to or would like to add to the agenda? Okay, hearing none, I guess that's it. So, um, Hackfest planning. So, Todd. Um. Yep. Um, so, like Chris said, I think we're looking at uh, East Coast in the April time frame and then likely uh, June in Beijing. Uh, we'll have some other activities happening in Beijing uh, in June, as is. Uh, LinuxCon Beijing is happening for the first time this year. Uh, we'll be having a Hyperledger Hyperledger track at that, potentially a Hyperledger developer day, something like that. Uh, so we're looking to uh, take you back onto that. Um, but for either of those dates or locations, if you have venue space and are potentially interested in hosting, please get in touch with me as soon as possible. Uh, we'd like to get these nailed down pretty quickly here so people can make travel plans and uh, use their arrangements if necessary. Todd, what is the date for the LinuxCon in Beijing? Uh, one second, let me have a look. 
And somebody is typing on a very loud, clicky keyboard. Let's see. It is uh, June, June 19th. Uh, oh, no, sorry. It is... Second, uh, it looks like June nineteenth and twenty is when that's happening. Okay. All right, I know I've made a commitment to be in Brussels on the twenty eighth. I just want to make sure it wasn't a conflict. Okay, because I think Brussels is uh, my twenty twenty Europe. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right, so you know, as Todd said, if anybody has any um, facility, so we're thinking, is it New York then, or how about Boston? That's another possibility, and then we can get Greg to actually come to one of those. <laughs> yeah, I think I think folks were fairly open on that. It just sounded like East Coast generally, so New York, Boston, um, Jersey City, whatnot, all, all around there is good. Okay. So again, if anybody has. Um, uh, some possible space. You know, again, I think the criteria is we need to have space for about 75 to 100 people. Um, how many did we have at the last one? Do you know? Did we have a final count? Yeah, we. Um, there were 80 plus that registered. I think uh, the max we had at any given time was around 70 ish. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's the Hackfest planning. Um, and I think, you know, in all fairness, I think we should probably look to try and nail down uh, early April dates um, within the next week or so. Is there, Todd, could you put a doodle poll up at least so we can yep. pick a date? Yep, sure thing. And um, that would be good. Okay, we talked about the charters. Um, and we've already covered that. So then the uh, the other one is uh, create a Slack archive repository um, based on the again the archived discussions. You know the question is do we do we do this and bother or with the you know is everything in the archives ephemeral and therefore why bother? I guess is really the the question before us here. Yeah, I, I think there was a question about how much can we archive or just whatever we currently have, then then probably it's not as useful. Hmm. Well, I mean, if there was a question for how far we, apparently it's all of it, right? I mean, you know, while the history was dropping off and you couldn't search in Slack while we were all very active there because there's a 10,000 message search limit for the freemium account, when you do leave, you get all your history back. <laughs> So it's all there. Um, oh, in that case, then, then then it's useful because I I, I do have some uh, stuff that I, I wanted to do right. like just like last week, and I, and I you know and of course there's no way we can get to it. So if we could get that, then then that would be very very useful. Okay. So uh, I agree with this. I had a question. Maybe Rise on he can tell me, but. Uh, when I try to actually browse through the uh, GitHub repo where the archive has been put, I couldn't actually see the documents. It's when I go to like the Fabric Dev the channel archive, it, it the HTML version at least it says, "Sorry about that, but we can't show files that are that big." So I don't know. Is there another way I'm supposed no, to access the HTML if, version? If you uploaded a document, you're, you're talking about uploading documents and stuff like that. No, I'm about uh, just looking at the archive. Oh, really? So, I think we should, I, and so I don't know, Rai, uh, are you on? I see Rai in the participants list on the meeting. Maybe you can tell us more about what exactly is there, what, what are we supposed to be able to do with what's there? Uh. There you go. I hear you. <laughs> uh, that's surprising. Um, so, so the there is the uh, the JSON export, and all I did was use a tool to uh, combine the JSON files and produce HTML. So, um, if the HTML is too large to load, I, I guess I could. Uh, 
break it into smaller pieces. I'm not sure what what file is too big to load. Well, it's a GitHub limitation, I guess. Do, I mean, how are you supposed to access this? Is there a different URL I'm supposed to use? Let's be clear. I'm going to put it in the chat. There's a URL I'm looking at there. I put it in the go to meeting you, chat. Right. It's, couldn't you, know, it's couldn't what you just you clone this locally? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Like, you don't need uh, to browse it through github.com. No, yeah. so the, the the difficulty is that it's uh, it is the the native format is just a bunch of JSON. It's all in there. If you go into the if you go into the raw uh, directory instead of the HTML directory, you'll see right. exactly what the export is, and it's pretty brutal. Um, so I, I, I'm thinking, Rye, that maybe the thing to do is not a GitHub repo, but actually just to host the HTML with an index. Um, uh, my, know, my, also, my hope was that uh, there, he, at some point there would be uh, a better way. The, the tool to do this raw to HTML is not great. And, and I was hoping that, uh, you know, at some future date, someone would have a better tool. Uh, we can go ahead and, and find a way to host it. But... Uh, well, I'm just thinking, I mean, because just hosting the raw HTML, you don't get HTML rendered when you open that up. You actually have to... Right. You have to tell... You, you'd have to fake it out somehow. It, it, so I think if we just hosted this through, you know, Nginx or something... Well, right. uh, does, does Nexus let us host just... HTML? Uh, it's complaining good about the size. Sorry? It's complaining about the size of the file. Uh, yeah. And that's why it's showing wrong. 4.28 megabytes. <laughs> yeah, it's a big file. Which is why it's a shame that we don't have access to it. <laughs> but I think, you know. Going back to the question on the agenda, I'm totally in favor of restoring these archives and making them available. I mean, so, but in its current form, it's not quite, you know, as useful as it could be, let's say. Yeah. Okay, well, let me, uh, let me, re let me try to refactor this in some way that it's uh, better to use and I can look into getting it into Nexus, you know, I would really, I would really like to make the raw archives easily available. Um, it is only, whatever, 70-ish uh, megs of stuff, so it wouldn't put any big uh, strain on our Nexus setup, but I think it's GitHub which is complaining. Not, not because it's too yes, big. Yes, I agree with that. So get out. All right. So, Ryan, let's let's work on figuring out a way just to host the the HTML. We can keep the files around in Nexus or whatever. I mean, in fact, we could keep that repo as is for you know. Or or that yes right and. But but you need to find a different way to access the HTML so that you can actually see the rendered HTML. That's all. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay, so then the last um, uh, step, so we'll defer any formal vote or anything. I think everybody is, is generally in favor of the idea of keeping the archives, especially if it is all the way back. So we just need to find a good way to do that. Um, and then finally is the internship program. So Todd, you want to remind people about what this is about and Yep. And then let's have a discussion about how we manage the, uh, the process. So just as a quick overview, again, we have funding to um, host uh, six interns. We called for mentors over the last few weeks um, who would volunteer to help mentor the interns, uh, as well as provide some project suggestions 
uh, that the interns could work on. Uh, we received 12 proposals, uh, which is fantastic. Happy to see that. Um, but we are only able to bring on six interns. So what we need to do as a next step is uh, figure out a format just to whittle down the 12, 12 mentors and projects that we have down to six. And then from there, it'll be pretty easy. We will launch this on our internship portal that the Linux Foundation has across all projects uh, and start calling for the interns to apply for this. So I think the, the only question at this point is just to figure out uh, the best format um, to whittle down the proposals, whether the TSC reviews them, whether we just form a small lightweight group um, of people interested in reviewing those. Um, but, you know, defer to this group on, on how best to, to whittle those down before we post this publicly and call for people to apply. Hey, Todd, this is Leonard. To make it more democratic, could we don't just vote on it and uh, whittle it down to a short list, and then you could take that to a select group within the TSC to make that final decision for a fix. Just a thought. Well, so, I mean, we, we, we could, but then that sort of means that everybody has to look at all of them, and what I was thinking of would be more along the lines that we would have a smaller group that would do the work of looking at all 12 of the proposals and coming back with a proposal um, for the TSC to approve. I mean, you know, we could do them all. We could review each one as a, as a group here and discuss them all. That I'm just thinking that would take a little bit more time for everybody as opposed to maybe getting a group of, you know, four or five of us together to, to do that. So let me let me ask this: Are there any volunteers for pulling together a small group of us to to review this uh, the, the the proposals? Volunteers? Well, I think um, in 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 the voting um, <coughs> sort of uh, <coughs> reps that we have on the call, in in addition to any of the non-voting members, I think, yeah, I certainly would be interested. There's one. Leonard, can you just send me your email or, or post it into chat? Do that, man. <clears throat> Any others? If we don't, then <laughs> what we'll end up doing is uh, we're we're all going to be doing it. It looks like Victor is uh, happy to to review as well from the chat window. All right, that's two. Uh, Hart as well. Hart. Balwa. That's three. Okay. Balwa. All right, and me. That's five. I think that's all right. That that sounds good. Cool. Um. So and again, if anybody else would like to, you know, again, I'm happy to have others. Um. Okay, so I can get a note off to the people that raised their hands, uh, and then that will just include what the proposals were so people can review them. Uh, and then why don't we try to get that done before the TSC call next week, just so the TSC can uh, then approve the six and then we'll get that posted just after next week's call to have interns apply. Okay. Does that work? All right. Let, yeah. Let me just check my calendar here. Um, so very quickly, Monday morning, oh crap. How about um, Tuesday morning, nine o'clock? What do we have? Victor, we have uh, Bawa, me, Leonard, you're in the UK, right? No, I'm actually in Canada, just across the border. <laughs> oh, you're in Canada. Oh, okay. So that so we could actually go a little later, and then that way Hart would not have to wake up at the crack of before dawn. Yeah. <laughs> I visited um, occasionally, but no, we are not here. But again, I, I'm mindful of the fact that we have two in Beijing, which is, what, 12 hours now, or is it 13? Oh, well, what time is it there now?
It's 11. Okay, ouch. Um, Hart, would you be okay with uh, not at 9 a.m. Eastern? He fell off his chair. <laughs> it wouldn't be optimal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and okay. Chris, is the idea for them to for everyone to discuss in this call, or do you want folks to review independently? And well, I think you should, I, yeah, I think we should review ahead of time, not review them on the call, and then we yep. can have a short call. Why don't we do that? How about nine thirty? That would be okay. Have a half an hour call, nine thirty, and we'll just go through and hash through any uh, any, any concerns. So we, we won't be reviewing them, you know, each one by each on the call, but we will go through and do a, a pre-review and then come prepared to make decisions. Sound reasonable? Yes, it does to me. Could you send out a calendar invite at the end, Todd? Yes, will do. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, and then with that, again, so next week we're going to have a busy week. Um, we'll have the request uh, to exit incubation for Fabric. We'll have the um, digital assets discussion on the uh, global synchronization log, and uh, we'll have the intern program sorted out and voting, and we'll hopefully have something to talk about with regards to the uh, requirements working group and uh, fabric. So busy week next week. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I'll give you half an hour back. Well, have a great day, everyone. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks, Cheers. Chris. Bye.